After 10 plus years of waiting, obsessing and practically fondling myself over this game, Starfield is finally here. This review is coming a little late because honestly, even after 100 plus hours, I still felt like there were things I had to do before reviewing and the last thing I wanted to do was rush the review out. If you're looking for a quick review, then I'll just say this game is really good, but I do have some pretty major problems with it. But without wasting any more time, let's just get into it. This is going to be broken up into sections and you will be able to find the timestamps below in the description and of course, no spoilers here. So let's just dive in. Now first things first, I want to talk about the world. The world that Bethesda have created in Starfield is amazing and filled to the rim with lore, just like Elder Scrolls and Fallout. It's everything that you would expect. It's a wonderful world that you can truly get lost in and it's really exciting finding out the lore and seeing what the world is about, meeting factions, characters, finding out why enemies are enemies, figuring out people's beliefs, discovering the different moons and planets, it's all great fun and that brings me into combat. Now the combat in Starfield is great, it's basically Fallout 4's combat on chems if you get what I mean. You will need to unlock tons of skills to make the combat go from just okay to amazingly fun, but this is an RPG so that's a given, right? It does take some sort of getting used to, but I will say that for a combat that runs on 30 FPS for consoles, it does amazingly well. Like I'm not a 30 FPS defender by any means. You will know that I thought it was nothing short of embarrassing when Bethesda confirmed Starfield's 30 FPS on consoles, but look, I'll admit when I'm wrong. I tested Starfield on my Series S as well, although I am mostly playing on my X and PC, but I didn't notice any frame drops whatsoever with 30 FPS, and honestly, you can't even really tell that the game is 30 FPS. FPS. So props to Bethesda for that. Although I have frozen about 5 or 6 times on my console, it's important to note that my 100 plus hours here on Starfield was on PC, and I've put maybe a day like 25-26 hours into the game on Xbox. But it was only on Xbox that these freezes happened, and they'd be over within a couple of seconds, so it's not a huge deal for me. I'm just grateful that the game isn't crashing on my console like Fallout 4 does. Moving on to dialogue and questing. This game is truly filled with dialogue and it's such a standout. I was actually quite taken back at the facial animations too. When NPCs talk to each other in dialogue scenes or talk to you, it actually feels like two people having a conversation and I'm pleasantly surprised at that. I've got to say that at least for me, Starfall's characters feel more quote unquote real than any previous Bethesda Game Studios game. The dialogue isn't corny slash cheesy like that of Elder Scrolls sometimes, or edgy like that of Fallout sometimes. It's just right, it just works, to quote Todd Howard himself. Barrett and Sarah are definitely my two standouts, I love these companions so much, and they're very well written. I've got to say that Sarah Morgan is Starfield's Nick Valentine. Nick was a big character in Fallout 4, who was basically universally loved for those who have never played it. And we need to talk about the exploration, and this really kills me to say, but I've got to be honest with you guys, this is where the game runs dry in almost every level. The exploration in Starfield is not good, simply. There was, at least in my opinion, zero reason for manual spaceflight in this game. 99% of the time, you're just fast travelling to your ship, not even taking off and just fast travelling to the quest that you need to go to. And you don't even need to fast travel to your ship to do this, actually. You could just fast travel to the quest marker, and it's annoyingly clear that you're sort of in a box. And what I mean by this is these stupid boundaries on every single planet and moon. You land somewhere, run around for a while trying to find something cool, most of the time only to discover resource locations which is always a kick in the nuts and if you walk too far you have to fast travel back to your ship take off into space and land somewhere else on the planet and it's difficult to sort of see where you want to land as well it's just ridiculously bad in my opinion it's super immersion breaking and it's by far my biggest complaint of the game but even outside of that the exploration itself is just lacking considering this is a space game i really hoped for more because why do we go to space in the first place to explore now look, I don't want you to take this as me hating the game, because I don't. I actually love it, and I know I'm going to be obsessed with the Starfield franchise. But this is, in my opinion, the worst exploration system that Bethesda have ever done. In Fallout and Elder Scrolls, it all seems seamless. You walk from place to place within the map, discover locations and buildings and groups, but in Starfield it's just so abundantly clear that you're trapped inside of this box, 
and it just really makes the exploration feel dull and quite frankly tedious. Look, if you've subscribed to me for a while then you'll know that I was a massive defender of this game not allowing us to fly inside of a planet's atmosphere, but yeah, the game needs it. I was wrong, I'll gladly admit that. It's annoying as fuck having to constantly take off and land on a moon or planet just to explore what's probably going to be another boring location. And that takes me to spaceflight, which again isn't great. Exploration and spaceflight go hand in hand and they are my two biggest complaints. And pretty much my only complaints with Starfield actually. The spaceflight isn't bad, like it's okay, it runs fine, looks beautiful, but it's pointless. There's zero reason besides maybe encountering a ship that has some dialogue for you or getting into some dogfights that you'd even bother flying around. Most of the time you're just clicking on your quest, choosing to, you know, show the quest marker in the map and then fast traveling there. There's no reason for Starfield to have manually flyable spaceships and that kills me to say. And it also doesn't help that fast travel isn't as quick as Bethesda's older games because you have to go through like five different clicks just to fast travel but anyway now two other things that i'm not enjoying but i wouldn't call bad i just don't think it's for me is the outpost building and ship building ship building is quite confusing it isn't explained to you at all and i think that and outpost building are two things that needed to be explained to you in the game with the amount that they try and explain things to you in starfield these are the two things that i actually wanted an explanation for and didn't get one. You'll basically try and build a cool ship and it just has all of these errors that aren't explained to you to the point where you just want to give up trying. And as someone who loved building settlements in Fallout 4, like I unapologetically loved building settlements in Fallout 4, I was very hyped to try outpost building. And it's the same thing. I was building outposts and just getting confused, not understanding why I can't send people there yet, and running out of resources and thinking, well, even after a hundred plus hours, I've never even heard of this resource. I have no idea how to get it. Tell me where to get it, or at least hint it or something. It isn't as simple as Fallout 4, where you'd run out of resources and think, okay, so I'll go and do some questing, pick up a bunch of junk, and hope I find what I need. And it should have been that simple, in my opinion. Because that's how you make building work well. You mix it in within reasons to go and explore and do questing and stuff like that. It ties everything together and Starfield just doesn't do that. But with the actual quests, they're amazing. This is by far Bethesda's best main quest in my opinion. I really love it and I've never loved a BGS main quest before. I've liked most of them, if not all of them, but never loved them. I loved this quest. It's difficult to explain why without going into spoiler territory, so I'll just say I appreciate that it isn't a quick save the world game and it's slow and focuses on mystery and what's out there and tells a real story besides we need to save the world. Starfield does have a lot of choices which I love and a few consequences which you all know I was begging for. As far as the quest system goes, I do absolutely love it. I don't like having to fast travel to like 20 different places to get there, but I love how easily you can find which types of quests are what, how they're so like sort of neatly organized in the menu for you. Props to you Bethesda for this. Please keep this going for Elder Scrolls 6 and Fallout 5. I love that you can look between the main quest and activities and miscellaneous quests and faction quests. I love how it's all separated and nice and neatly put on the screen for you. When it comes to companions, they're great. I still think that Fallout 4 has the best companions that Bethesda have ever done. But Starfield is very close. The companions here are certainly better written, and I don't know what it is, I just think I had a funner time with Fallout 4's companions. I felt closer to them, if that makes sense. Now the weapons, the spacesuits, the clothing variety is all amazing. You're always going to find something that fits your style, I just want to throw that out there. I do think that these are Bethesda's best weapons so far across all of their games. All of them are super fun to use and it really makes you want to try them all and focus on getting perks for the ones that you really like the most. Now, I'm not really a fan of video games sort of holding your hand and giving you a ton of tutorials and while Starfall doesn't give you a ton of tutorials it does try and explain a lot to you but I will say that I think Starfield needed that. The game is very overwhelming at first, and while you do get used to that, it takes some time to figure out. It would have been nice to actually have somebody explain shipbuilding and outpost building and what I'm doing wrong when building my ships, or doing research, or whatever, you know. But all in all, Starfield is a fantastic game. 
Everything from the world to the quest to the characters to the lore is all amazing. Although of course I did have some pretty huge complaints, I do want to give the benefit of the doubt for Bethesda and praise them for trying to do something cool and unique within their franchises. People kept asking if Starfield would feel more like Elder Scrolls or Fallout, and the truth is it feels like neither, and that's a good thing. It stands on its own, and I absolutely do love this franchise. And look, even after 100 plus hours, I still feel like I'm just getting started. So in about a month, I'm probably going to make a my extended thoughts on Starfield video. But as far as a review goes, the game is truly amazing and well worth the wait. As for buy it now, wait for sale, or avoid, I'm gonna give it a buy it now. You all know that I hate video game prices at the moment, but Starfield is well worth it because you're not just paying a ton of money for a game that will beat within a couple of days, you're paying a ton of money for a game that, quite frankly, you're probably gonna be playing for decades. But look, that's my review. If you have any non-spoilery questions before you buy, comment below and I will try to answer everyone as best I can, but please do drop the video a like for me, consider subscribing if you're new around here and want to stay fully up to date on Starfield content, and lastly as always a huge massive thank you to our channel members for supporting me month after month, it truly means the world so thank you all so much for your generosity, but with that all said and done, that is my review, so thank you all so much for watching and I really hope to see you next time, peace.